misused his authority and his power. The Christians saw the rise of this new leader as a serious threat to the Crusader kingdoms. His message was simple and direct, unity and jihad. Nur al-Din's vision was very straightforward. Our countries have been occupied by the barbarians and we have to free them. And the only way to free them, they have waged holy war on us, we will wage a holy war against them. In Europe, word reached the Pope of the fall of Edessa. On December 1st, 1145, Pope Eugenius III was compelled to take drastic action. He called for a second crusade. The Second Crusade was an extraordinarily ambitious scheme. It was an idea of extending the borders of Christianity in every single direction. The Christians were terribly confident at this time. They looked upon it as a sort of a rerun of the First Crusade. And a lot of the preaching stresses the idea that the Crusaders should live up to the deeds of their fathers. The call to arms was answered by one of the most powerful men in Europe, King Louis VII of France and his wealthy wife, Eleanor of Aquitaine. The First Crusade had been led by nobles, counts. Here, the King of France, King Louis VII, took the cross. This was, of course, quite a sort of radical move, the idea of a king leaving his lands for two or three years, having probably a sort of one in three chance of dying. It's a dangerous thing. King Louis had a deep Christian faith and was determined to honor the exploits of the First Crusaders by retaking Edessa and then expanding the Crusader kingdoms. But he was a man of very little military experience and not a natural leader. 